Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome back to our JDA tutorial series. Now in this episode, we're gonna be talking about user cache as well as uh, user retrieval methods and how to use those in your events. So if you remember in the last episode, if we come to our event listener here, we have this on user update online status event. Now this event will not actually fire if you remember, uh, like we mentioned last time, it will not fire even though we have the guild presences gateway intent activated and that's because we need to enable user cache. And if you don't know what a cache is, it's basically a store of data that can be easily accessed uh, without needing to make a query. So essentially we need to cache our users uh, for that are using this bot in order to actually use this, uh, this event here. So to do that, what we can do is go over to our tutorial bot sort of main class here, and uh, we can just set this as a flag in our builder. So we can take our builder here and right below intents or wherever really, we can do builder dots. And the first thing I should, I guess we can check out here is the uh, set member cache policy. So we can do dot set member cache policy here. And as you would expect, this will allow us to set a cache policy for members. So we can do member cache policy dots. And you can see there's a lot of different options here. So if for example, you were to do all, member uh, cache policy to all, this will cache all users that are using the bot. So pretty much all users and all guilds that your bot is added to. Uh, another option is uh, member cache policy dot online. These are users that are just online, which you know makes sense for a lot of people. Why would you need to cache users that aren't using your bot currently? Uh, so there's a lot of options here. Uh, you can cache just the owner, so that would be you. Um, there's lots of different options here. So I'm gonna go with member cache policy dot all just uh, for testing purposes, but I'll mention in a little bit why we don't always wanna do this. Um, so this is gonna cache all members, um, but it's gonna do what's called lazy loading. So lazy loading is essentially going to slowly cache all these users over time as they come online and use uh, features of Discord and, and interact with your bot. So that means that we might not actually uh, uh, be caching all the users you know, accurately. Like we may not have access to all of them all at once at any given time. So uh, what we can do to rectify that is we can actually set another flag here with builder dot set member, uh, not set member cache policy, we just did that, uh, dot set chunking filter. And this allows you to set a chunking filter. And we can pass in here a chunking uh, filter dot, chunking filter dot. And there's really only two options here. There's none and all. So chunking is essentially, if you if you have chunking dot all here, this allows uh, or it forces your bot to cache all users on startup. So when you run the bot, it's going to look at every single user that is in every single server um, that that bot is actually added to, and it's gonna cache them. So we can do that here, and this is gonna make sure that uh, basically on startup, yeah, with these two policies enabled, it's going to cache all members. Uh, but if you were to, for example, not have this, this member cache policy, you don't wanna have chunking set to all because uh, this is probably gonna mess up JDA. Uh, there's no reason to chunk unless you're cacheing the members. So yeah, but these are not the only settings we need to set because we also need to determine what we want to enable to save in the cache about the user as well. So to do that, we can do builder dots and we can do enable cache and we can set a cache flag here. And you can see there's not very many, but uh, this is essentially what it's going to cache about a, a user. So for example, their activity status right here or their online status or the roles that they have access to, their voice state, all this kind of stuff. These are cache flags that you can pick and choose based on what you're trying to access. So if you remember, before I do this real quick, if you remember, let's go back to event listener. This event here, it's uh, getting the user and it's basically saying that this user updated their online status. So even though we have users cached here and it's loading them on startup with our chunking filter all, uh, this is uh, specifically looking at online status and unless we are specifically cacheing a user's online status, it's not gonna throw or this uh, throw this event at us essentially. So we need to set our cache flag to online status. And yeah, now this should actually work, but I wanna mention that, you know, this is just one example. So if you're making another type of, uh, 
events or you're, you're implementing another event that messes with uh, activity status or roles, you may need a, a cache or enable cache on certain different types, depending on what you're actually using. Um, so yeah, now that we have all three of these, and remember this is, we're caching the members, we're caching them all on startup, and we're making sure that we store their online status data. So now that this is actually all enabled, we can run this uh, this event here. And let's actually, uh, in order to make it a little bit more interesting, right now all it's doing is uh, saying, hey, this user updated their online status. Let's actually show the status. So updated their status to events dot uh, get new online status dot. And then I guess we can just get the key for now. Um, and a little exclamation mark. So this should say Technovision updated their status to, you know, online or something. So if you run the bot, it's going to cache all of those users at startup. Um, and by all of those users, I mean just literally me and uh, me six for right now. And uh, all right, so if we actually come over here and we change our online status to like idle, there we go. Technovision updated their status to idle. And we can try do not disturb and uh, invisible. It just says offline there and even online. So great, this is working perfectly. Now there's actually a lot more to caching users than just accessing certain events. There are certain retrieval methods that uh, are necessary to actually access user data and some of them will not actually work unless you're caching users. So let's go to this uh, little event here, but this would be the case in all events and even commands, which we'll touch on later. But uh, let's say that you wanted to access all members in a server, right? All guild members in an event, for example, you would grab that event, you would get guild, and then you, from this guild, you could do something like get members, right? And this would get you a list of members. So you would expect this to work totally fine. There's no errors going on here. You know, set it to a list of member, whatever, list of members, maybe just call it members, right? This seems like it would work fine, but if you didn't have, uh, let me just import this. If you didn't have these flags here, if you didn't have cache policy set to all, and you didn't have chunking filter set to all, then uh, this actually would not return an accurate list. It might return a couple members, maybe you and the bots and like a couple other people, but it definitely would not be the full list. And that is because uh, we would need to cache all those members on startup, again, with chunking, in order to actually have this be an accurate list. So this literally will not work uh, unless you are caching users. Another example is, for example, uh, if we were to take this list of members here and we were to uh, a loop over all of them. So let's get member, uh, member, and then let's loop through this, uh, this list here. So let's say we wanted to uh, get the number of users that were online in a current server. So let's actually change this, uh, this event here to not just show that a user updated their status, but to also show the current number of online users. So uh, let's say we could go through this list of members and let's set a, an integer here called uh, online members, set it equal to zero. And we're just gonna go through and check each member, check their online status and see if it's online. And if it is, we're just gonna increment this, uh, this integer here. Pretty basic uh, Java code, right? So if member dots, we can get their online status here. So if member get online status um, is equal to online status dots uh, online. So if the member is online essentially, then we can just uh, increment online online member members is what I meant to name it. Online members plus plus, right? And so we could throw this in uh, in our our actual text here. We could say like uh, Technovision updated their status. Um, there are now uh, this variable number of online users online users online in this guild. Right, so this is gonna now say Technovision updated their status. There are now, you know, let's say three users online in this guild. Um, so this actually would work uh, only if, this specific section here, I mean, would only work if we have this flag here, this cache flag online status. So even though we're able to access with, uh, with these two flags here, the member cache policy and the chunking filter, even though we're able to access the uh, list of members with those two flags, we actually cannot see their online status uh, unless we also ask a JDA to cache that specific data. 
And you know, again, if we wanted to access um, from this list, like member.getActivity, for example, like to get their activities, Again, we'd have to go back to our bot. We'd have to make sure that we enable cache here and add a new one uh, with a comma, a new cache flag dot activity. Same thing for emote or uh, roles, all that kind of stuff. You're gonna need to cache if you're going to access it from a, a list like that. So uh, yeah, that's why caching can be very useful if you're going to be accessing members a lot. So let's actually see this in action by running the bots and going to Discord. And if we change our status to uh, do not disturb, there we go. There's only two users now online, just me six and the bots. But if we go online, there are now three members online. So if you were doing this again in another event uh, and you didn't have that, uh, that online status cache flag, then it would actually display inaccurate information. It would say that there are zero members online, even though that's not actually the case. Now there are other methods of accessing a user or a member without having to cache, and we're gonna talk about that next, which is called retrieval methods. Now the reason you might wanna do this instead is because if we go to our tutorial bot class here, when we actually cache all members on startup, it might seem fine for you know a new bot that's only in a couple servers and maybe has like a couple hundred members. But if you think about it in the long term, let's say your bot gets to a point where it's in thousands of servers and is serving potentially millions of users uh, on startup, that's gonna be caching literally every single user um, that is in those servers. That's millions and millions of users. It's gonna absolutely destroy your memory usage uh, for your little server. And you might have to upgrade your server hardware really quickly. So I honestly don't recommend uh, caching users at all unless you absolutely have to. So if you're gonna be accessing all members in a server constantly over and over again, or you wanna be retrieving lots of users all the time, then you might wanna cache all and, uh, and add chunking. But if you're not gonna do that, if you can avoid it, I would recommend actually not doing this uh, because it will save you so much memory. And when I was developing Technobot, my own personal Discord bot, I had to make a decision to remove a couple features because it was just not worth it memory wise to actually cache all these users. But if you wanna actually retrieve a user without caching, so let's say we, uh, we didn't actually have these here. Uh, if you didn't, if you wanted to retrieve a user uh, in a different way, you could actually do, uh, let's get the guilds. You would event dots, well not a guild actually, you would do events dot gets uh, JDA is the first way. And you would do dot retrieve user by ID. So uh, you can notice here that this is actually a rest action. So when we retrieve a user, we can throw in an ID for them. So for example, this is just an example. I don't know you would why you would use this in this particular event here, but let's say I grabbed my ID real quick for, for a, a me six, copy his ID and paste it in there. So if for whatever reason we wanted to retrieve the, the user me six from our server or just as a user in general, uh, you would retrieve this user by ID, but then you also have to dot queue it because remember this is an action we're asking Discord to do for us. So uh, this is gonna be a, a pretty heavy command on the Discord API on, on your bot. So uh, you don't wanna do this very often either. You wanna avoid queuing as much as possible. So it's kind of a trade off. It's up to you to decide what you wanna do. If you're gonna be accessing these members a lot, then don't use uh, you know rest actions here. Just try to cache those members and, and then you can get them really easily with methods like this dot get members but if you are worried about memory usage then you can use a rest action here and you can retrieve um, instead and just queue to retrieve it again this does not require caching at all this will work even if there's no cache because it's retrieving the user through a rest action and uh, you could also do something like events dot get guild dot retrieve uh, member by ID. So if you wanted to retrieve a member object instead from a particular guild, uh, you could do that as well. So we could get uh, me six as a member and we could queue. And yeah, so those are additional ways uh, that you can retrieve members uh, without having to cache. One downside though to retrieving a user through a, uh, a rest action is that you'll actually have to use a callback in order to use it. So if you know how rest actions work, you actually can't uh, set this to a user object, for example, uh, because that's not how rest actions work. We're, we're queuing up a asynchronous action for the Discord API to execute or for JDA to execute. So we actually have to use a callback here. So we could do like user and then use a, uh, a callback here with a Lambda and essentially um, 
uh, we now have access to this user object in the callback. So we could do like user dots and then get their, uh, you know, whatever information we want. Um, and the reason for this again is because we need to wait until Discord has actually retrieved the user before we can get it because we don't know when this queue is going to finish. There is another option, although it's very uh, um, not a great idea to use. It's kind of frowned upon. You could do dot completes and this would actually uh, allow you to set the uh, retrieval method to a user object. But uh, this is not recommended because this will actually, I believe, freeze your bot until it's done. So you could use it in some rare cases maybe, but I really would not recommend doing that. It would be better to just uh, you know queue this up and then get that user object um, and use it in a callback. And you can actually chain callbacks. So you could like chain several callbacks to your user too and chain that callback and then you can get both users and you know whatever you wanna do really, um, you can chain those uh, callbacks together. But yeah, that is how you actually retrieve a, a one member and if you actually had cache set to all, member cache set to all, and chunking filter set to all, you could actually uh, avoid using these rest actions by using get. So you could do event.getJDA, which again, JDA gets your actual bot itself, dot uh, get user by ID. And uh, notice how you can throw in the ID here. And this doesn't use a rest action. It just allows you to set a user to a user object. Uh, because it's stored in the cache. But again, if you didn't have that cache set, if none of this was set, or I guess if just these two were not set, then this may not give you the information you need. Uh, and you could also do same with member, you know, member, member is equal to event.gets guild dot get member by ID. Same sort of idea here, no, no rest action required. So yeah, just to make this clear, uh, requires cache. And then this uh, does not, or does not require cache, but requires a rest action. Yeah, so uh, an easy way to remember this is if you're using get, you are you need a cache. But if you're using retrieve, if you're retrieving, then you don't need a cache because you're retrieving it from somewhere far away. That's how I think about it. Um, but another thing I should mention really quickly as well is that if you do have cache, let's set, say, let's say you don't have chunking filter set and all you have is member cache policy all. So this means that uh, members are just going to be cached slowly over time as they, uh, as they load in discord. Uh, you could actually still use retrieval methods, but, and use that doc queue. But if the user is cached, it will skip the rest action and it will just grab it from the cache. So that can be a great alternative if you are worried about uh, using a lot of rest actions. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember that I really don't recommend actually caching users at all until you really necessarily need it for a specific feature. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, in the next episode, we'll actually be talking about slash commands, which is really exciting. So I will see you soon.